Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really excited to have you join us here on Mila Live with our hashtag Mila Dines Local uh, event that's going to happen in about, uh, we're about 10 minutes away. Um, we're really excited to have Chef Welbert Choi from Forge in Vancouver join us today. So be sure to tune in, um, get ready for a really exciting, fun uh, session. So we hope to see you in a couple minutes from now.
Good afternoon. Welcome, bienvenue, willkommen. My name is Kelly Lamb. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Mila. And once again, we want to welcome you to Mila Live. As many of you are continuing to stay at home, we've been able to bring to you answers to questions you have about products that you own in your home or products that you're actually interested bringing into your home. With Mila Live and this new platform, we wanted to actually utilize this to help support some of the small businesses across the country that are also facing challenges right now during these very unique times we're facing. About two weeks ago, we started a new campaign, hashtag Mila Dines Local. And with this campaign, we're challenging restaurants and chefs across the country to share with us their unique dishes or signature dishes from their restaurants. And we're inviting them to come and cook online to, to join us to share that dish with you and also an opportunity for them to share information about their restaurants. In addition to that, with the restaurant, Mila will actually buy 100 meals from the restaurant, which we will jointly donate to frontline workers uh, in their local community. Today, we're very, very excited to travel out west again to Vancouver to have Chef Wilbur Choi from the amazing restaurant Forge join us today. Welcome, Chef. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. So excited to actually have you join us here on Meal Alive. Um, maybe to kick things off, we have viewers from across the country joining us today. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more um, about Forge. Well, Forge uh, started seven years ago. We're coming into the eighth years, and uh, it, it's a it's a farm to table restaurant. We focus off a lot of like sustainability issues, and like all our product or produce is like uh, selected according to our philosophy, and uh, we try to like contribute or help the community to uh, to 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 build a little small circle. Yeah. So uh, our, our restaurants here, unfortunately, because of the COVID, uh, all our operation has just shut down. And uh, we just started our our dinner service not too long ago. And like, this is a great opportunity that we should uh, showcase our uh, one of the signature dish we have. And where did the name Forge come from? Forge came from, uh, we just want, like, our means is this, and we just want to have enough to feed ourselves. So then we're, we're not trying to get everything to, like, to stop the world operating, what we just say. So it's us had to do a lot with our sustainability philosophy behind the restaurant. Yeah. Exciting. Um, so maybe as well, Chef, for those, uh, for those that are not necessarily from Vancouver, in Vancouver and now watching, where exactly are you located? So we're on 1300 Robson Street across Jervis. So we're right in downtown area, uh, right on Robson. It's, it's quite easy to find. You cannot really miss it and right next to the shopping district. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you were talking about that you just restarted dinner service. Um, maybe for those viewers that are actually from Vancouver right now, um, What's on the menu? What are your hours of operation? Uh, and where can they find out more details right now? So uh, all the information, of course, is on, is on our website. And right now we are operating five days a week from Wednesday to Sunday. Dinner only is starting from 5 p.m. So uh, our, we started with a relatively smaller menu compared to before. Because like, we're, we're trying to like, step in slower and mm -hmm. try to manage our our operation here with like minimal staff. Yeah. And uh, maybe it, could you tell the viewers what are some of the menu items that are actually on the menu right now for takeout? So 
the, the checkout is available uh, like with the regular menu, like you could you could have the checkout or you could have the dining. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the options, and on top of that, like we have a provision, couple items that we make the pizza and meatball and duck bounty, those things that you could it's ready it's ready to be reheated at home and uh, just like it's easier for people not to not to have a lot of involvement to to get a pretty decent meal. So like today we're making the bison. This is one of the um, they would say signature dish from day one that we have the restaurant. We never really take this dish off the menu. It's just like we're changing seasonal component on, on the menu. Yeah. So okay. other than that, we we are serving a, a, a smoked duck breast with a rhubarb butter and uh, a, a whiskey compressed rhubarb. Uh, and, and then we have uh, in season asparagus with a 64 degree egg and also in house make yolk. Uh, that's just like a very good vegetarian dish. Okay. So you're actually open uh, for dining as well right now. Yes. Okay. Exciting. That's, that's great to hear that the businesses are slowly coming back. Um, so yeah, I also cool. want to uh, take the opportunity to introduce my colleague and product expert here, Marilyn. Uh, welcome, Thank you, Marilyn, again. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Chef, uh, Marilyn, you, you guys have obviously been uh, discussing, and Marilyn's going to try to do our best to yeah. uh, cook along with you. Yeah, that's, that would be like really interesting. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. So, <laughs> so again, we're going to try our we're best. Gonna try. Uh, yeah. Our best. So I'm going to hand you off to Marilyn, and maybe again to kick things off, uh, talk about this dish um, and what are some of the ingredients, and then I'll let you guys get cooking. All right. Hello, chef. So, hi. How are you, Marilyn? Hi. I'm good, thank you. Very excited hi. to be doing this. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get started. So uh, today we're, we're making uh, a bison steak with uh, marrow roasted potato, uh, some bread and butter radish, pink oyster mushroom, and fritter head. So okay. uh, I'm going to just quickly introduce our the ingredients that we have on the camera so everybody know that we're, what we are working with. Uh, so oh. like our main ingredients of course is the bison i'll get it close up to the camera so you can see it so it's a uh, it's it, this cut is called a bivet it's it's sort of like it's uh, a very a forgetting like a, a, a cut that i really like other than like flat okay. iron now it's famous so everybody know about it but uh this cut particularly i i really like because of the flavor and in the same dish, uh, we have king oyster mushroom, uh, fritter heads. Like you can see, these guys are, are in season right now. And uh, the potato, uh, today we're using the uh, Yukon nugget. So it's about like that size. You can use like pretty much any kind of potato that you like. Uh, but this, this happened to be one of my uh, favorite potatoes to use. And uh, for the pickle, like we have like radishes and like this is pretty much like all available all year. Uh, but like the pickle radishes is, is a favorite thing to put on to get on some acidity on the, the dish. And um, when we start doing do the chimichurri, uh, we will have other spices and ingredients that we could go through. Okay, sounds great. Um, my right. potato is a little bit smaller so than yours because um, I bought the baby potatoes on mine, but I did yeah. blanch it first, put it a little bit, and then um, it was perfect for when I actually mashed it down a little bit. So it's good. All right. Okay. All right. You tell so, me now what do I, what were we doing first? So, like, we can just gonna prioritize what we're going to cut first. So, yeah. the first thing we want to uh, blanch with our heads. I already yes. have some hot water going on and okay. uh, so the brittle heads just for everybody to know and like it has a little toxin in it so 
you cannot eat it raw. You want you want you want to uh give it a good blend to get the toxin out of the of the of the uh, product. And this is a very nutritional uh, vegetable that you could actually find in a lot of forests. That first thing it come out from from spring. Okay. So what are we gonna do is like I have water here and we're gonna season the water. Okay. So chef, what I'm doing with my fiddlehead um, to blanch it, I'm putting it into our steam oven that we have, so that oh, that, and... that would that would be like the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, right. while you're doing yours, I'm just going to put mine in as okay, well. So, so approximately five minutes, you were thinking? Yes, like you have to blanch it like at least like five minutes. Okay. And Chef, while Marilyn's doing that, um, yeah. I think it's important to, because I think a lot of people are not so familiar with fiddleheads. Um, you do need to cook them and cook them you well, You do correct? need to cook them well, yes. Yeah. Like a lot of people would say like, it will lose its color, it's going to turn a little bit brown. But yes, you will lose, you will lose a little bit of green color. But it's necessary to get that the toxin out from from the plants. Um, okay. But you should just blanch it into a little soft tender. We we would call it. You still have little texture, but not mushy. Okay. So mine were in there for a little bit. So I've got probably about another minute to go. Yeah. Because I wanted to make yeah. sure it was cooked. Yeah. So I'm gonna put it. Put it aside because yes. that's still blanching. I'm gonna show you like some of the finished product. Okay. Yeah. So this is being blanched. So you see like the color is a little bit lighter, but it is not to a point it's all brown. Okay. So I'm going so, to so, actually yeah. take mine out as well. Yeah. So you you definitely feel this is a lot softer. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, these are plants very nice, so I'll put them to the Great. side. So when after mm -hmm. they are blanched, like yeah, know, they're they're like when when they were picked, like they're where it broke off, it usually gets like a lot of like brown color that yeah. I usually would just keep clean this off and get a like a like more presentable uh, version of the vegetable. So if you're blanching it, yep. after it's done, yep. then you want to get it into, you want to get it into an ice bath right away. Okay. To stop the cooking. Yep. Yeah. I'm just gonna do that. My ice water is on the side here. And chef, we have a we have a viewer that's asking a question uh, about the fiddlehead. Um, they've never had fiddlehead before. What would you compare it to? Well, like, don't be scared about fiddle heads. When you eat it, uh, the texture would somewhat like asparagus. Like, you, if you, you would compare, uh, like it has a little crunch, but it's still like soft enough. Like, you you have like a very different flavor from from the regular vegetable. Yeah, you see it like. Asparagus, the same thing. Like it has a different taste from any other, like spinach or or uh, like any like um, lettuces. Like fritter has is the same thing, and and uh, don't be afraid to try it. And okay. chef, is fiddleheads very uh, seasonal? Yeah, fiddleheads is very seasonal. So fiddleheads, if you let you let it grow, it will actually unroll itself and turn it into a fern. 
it's a it's a, a sperm family. So if you actually unroll this, that you can see the baby version of it. That's the fear hatch is it's around like a couple of weeks, um, a month or so, when the first thing first sign of of the spring. Like you'll come up from the from the ground and shoot up and you'll pick it from this point. There's literally it's gonna grow on the ground like this when you pick it. Okay. Chef, we do have a question from one of our viewers. Uh, Liz, yeah. welcome. Um, Liz is asking, what is bison similar to? It's very similar to beef, but with a uh, leaner structure. A leaner structure? Okay. Yes, that, it doesn't have much fat in it, but bison is one of the things that when we shop for beef, uh, usually we shop for, there's a good amount of marble, and that's like a mixture of of the fat layer between the protein. Uh, so that makes the beef feels like it's tender. But bison, it doesn't have much fat, but if you cook it right, it will still be tender. So that's okay. why like when we cook bison, uh, it's a little bit tough to eat it well done. Okay, thank you. All right, yep. so fiddleheads are done. I put them in the ice water to cool off. Um, so what are we doing next? So the next thing we're going to do the start the potato. This potato is going to take a little time. So, and okay. I have another pot of water going on in here. Okay. And, and then we're going to, we're going to put a little, uh, aromatic in there. I, I like, usually I like to put a few a bay leaf, a uh, couple of, couple of cloves of garlic, and, mm -hmm. and then some like black peppercorn, and sometimes you could use like onion, but uh, you could use the shallot also, just like to give it a little flavor. Okay. So you let you let the water simmer. I add a uh, Add a potato in there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It's like the yeah. water level, it should be like just cover the potato. Okay. And if you you have a if you have a lid, put a lid on, but in the commercial kitchen, like we sometimes like don't have a lid. So we use a parchment paper to, to make a little lid for the, for the pot. So this is how you do it. Like you have a piece of parchment paper. Right. You fold it. Yes. Yeah. And then fold it again. And then into like little cone shape. So you end up with something like this. Okay. So once oh. again, Chef, I actually, um, started my potatoes in our steam oven as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be coming out shortly. Yep. Okay. And then from this point, yeah. sort of want to just cut out what the pot size will be. Oh, I see. And then we make a little hole in the middle. Yeah. Just for the air to come out. Yes. So we open it up, it's just like a little small lip for our pot. So there we go. We're and chef, we, we do see a lot of that in commercial kitchens. Is there really, uh, is there an additional benefit for that? Well, to do it, it that way? The, the main point is like trying to keep, keep all the aromatic inside the pot. And without, with the really minimal evaporation from the liquid, like we in the in the kitchen, we actually keep this potato stock and reuse it and reuse it again. So every time you cook the potato, it adds in a little bit of flavor from the previous um, potato potato liquid. You say, yeah. 
So you see it, now the water is coming to boil, but you want to turn it down just to simmer. Right? Okay. So that, so my, gonna... my potatoes are actually almost ready to come out as well. Yeah. And to tell if the potato is ready, like you want to poke through like a paring knife or like a chopstick, any kind any kind of like a sharp knife. Like if you, you could poke through it in the middle, in the middle of the potato with like no resistance, the potato is cut. So in this dish, you just want the potato just cooked. You don't want it to be mushy. If you continue to cook it, it'll just yep. turn down into a uh, mashed potato. Right, so exactly. When, okay. Right. So when you see the potato, it's almost cooked. I mean, like it's soft enough. Then you take your the lid off. And if you notice, I have not seasoned my, my potato. I leave it till the end. So at the end process, I'll add in the salt. And then I'll turn off the heat. I'll let it sit for about like 15 minutes. So then like there's some salt content in the potato, get a little more flavor. Okay. All right, so potatoes are done. The fiddleheads are done. Okay. Okay. We'll move on to the next step. Yes. So we're going to do the onion liaison. So liaison okay. is just basically a sauce thickened with egg. So in this case, we're using the egg yolk. Okay. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start with uh, onion. So I have like just like a regular onion. You could use you could use like white onion or or sweet onion if you like. Okay. Yeah. And I'm putting the oil into the pan for us to cook the onion. Yeah. Is that correct? We're gonna okay. like preheat the pan. Yes. Don't cook it like so it's medium high heat, like you don't want to burn the onion once you put it in. So like regular onion, you just want to peel it and yes. like I have some onion half and now I'm gonna just to dice it and put it in the pan to start the caramelization. Okay. So I sliced mine, Chef. You diced yours. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it doesn't really. It doesn't really matter because at the end of of, of this liaison, it's going to be blend. So okay, like dicing it, I just I just want to get a little more caramelization. Like. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to do one onion. Yep. And then the pan, when it's when it's uh, hot enough, yes. We're gonna just uh, add with the oil about like three tablespoons. Okay. And we're gonna put a little butter also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm 
It's so sizzling this, now, so. Yeah, this process is gonna take. It's gonna take a while. Like you need to get you get you need to have some patience to get a good product from from this gap. Okay. More common, like more commonization you get, more more of that sweetness is gonna come out from the onion. Uh, but okay. But then you don't want to have it full on, and then you're gonna burn the onion, and you end up to be bitter. Right. Okay. So I'm putting my onion in. So, chef, normally, how long does it take uh, for the onion to caramelize when you're doing this process? I, I usually, I usually do this process about like 20 to 30 minutes. It depends, depends on the size of your pot and how, how big of the dice that you have. Okay. Yeah. All right. How are you doing over there? We're doing good. I mean, I'm just um, sauteing the onions right now. So I'm just going to turn up my heat a little bit. Do you usually like to, when you're sauteing your onions, do you usually just like to leave it al alone a little bit? Or do you like to keep mixing it? Or? I, like, I, I like to just leave it alone for a bit. Because okay. if you want it, you want it to caramelize. You don't want to move it too much. All right. Yeah. So once you get a little color, I'll yeah. turn down the heat a little bit, and I'll stir it once in a while. Okay. All right. Yeah. Chef, so another question for you: At Forage, obviously, this is one of your very popular dishes. Uh, what would you say is a really another uh, signature dish or? or a dish that customers really uh, have come to love uh, at Forge. The smoked duck has been like the other flavor of of the bison. Uh, like in a, on an, a typical night, like this is like the two dishes that sort of like they're competing each other. Some some night like more duck order, some nights with more bison order. So the, for the smoked duck breast, uh, just like the bison, we never really take the duck off the menu it's just like component change of like seasonal coming in and out uh like that's like two two of the proteins that this it's a sort of uh famous for but then other than that uh for a smaller dish like hand bread is one of one of people's favorite i will ask for it it's basically just like a, a, a bannock like it's on basic on a bannock recipe that we cook in a cast iron to order, and I just we just saw it with spicy honey. So when it gets to the table, it's still bubbling, and you can see all the actions and smell all the like cheese coming out from it. It's it's really fun to that that in at that dish. And and how often do you change the menu at Forge? Because obviously your philosophy is very around local and seasonal. Um, how often That's right. does that change? Like. In 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 the winter time, it the season like the changes maybe not as often, but like in the springtime, summertime when when like seasonal seasonal vegetable comes in or like protein, uh, we change it all the time. Like, it's like it could happen every week, and like this week you come in for dinner, the next week you come in there might be something different, maybe something new. Like for example, like now is the squat pond season, so we will have squat pond on like a feature dish, or or like asparagus. Like this 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 kind of uh, seasonal ingredient will come in and out all the time. Like in the winter time, uh, we do a lot of preserve and pickles, and we should have that to use in the winter time. So. Uh, so that's how we operate our menu. Okay. So I'm starting to get that golden color. Um, right. I lowered the heat just a little bit because I was just concerned that it was going to 
brown a little bit too much, but right. I'm fast Are you using here, okay. induction or a guess? No, I'm using our um, pro range uh, range top right now, oh, so okay. it's a gas range top. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, like for people who have induction cooktop, yeah, like it's it's really an advantage. You can set it to a certain heat amount. And right. You don't have to. You don't have to be like so, like paying attention to it. Like exactly. Guests, that you, you might you might want to have to pay more attention <laughs> to it because yeah. you spend like twenty minutes trying to get the maximum harmonization at the end. You walk yep. away and come back and burn it. Like yeah, uh, like you, you can't really save it. That's true. So true. All right. So I'm looking at yours, and I'm looking at mine. I'm getting that nice golden coloring. Yeah, mine is a little bit slower. Like it's like quite far away from what I Being, want. yeah. Yeah, like I usually uh, caramelize it to a point it's almost burnt, but not oh really? Quite. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the process, I really slow it down. In the beginning, okay. it doesn't really matter as long as you're paying attention to it. But the, at the end, you really have to slow down the process. Okay. It, 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 the heat carry over, and 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 then like you don't want to end up burning it. Yes. How are you doing on the other side? I'm I'm doing well actually. This is uh, getting a nice golden color. Yeah. But now that I know, know that you're saying to let it get darker, then I'm I'm doing okay. I'm gonna All leave right. it at the um, flame that I have it on the level. Chef, so while you and Marilyn are sauteing the onions, um, maybe. Yeah. To Tell us a little bit about, you know, how challenging it's been to kind of reopen the restaurant right now. It, it's really tough. Like our, our number one uh, problem or issue is about the distancing in the restaurant. We lose a lot of capacity. We're a 79 seat restaurant. Like we're down now to 33 seats the most. But you're talking about if you have a party of four people or you could have like a maximum of six people. But most of the cases right now, it's, it's two people having dinner. So we technically have a 20 seat restaurant. We, we have like very few capacity compared to before. That, that is like the most challenging, that's most challenging to open and reopen. Uh, because like you know, dinner time is only a few hours. Like nobody's gonna go in dinner for like nine thirty at night or four o'clock in the afternoon. So within within that service time, there's only so many people you could you could serve. So it becomes down to your profitability. Like you you're not even profitable anymore. So like to so some of the business, like what what is the point having it open? And you, you're just having your name uh, alive. Right. Yeah. And how was the uh, was is was the takeout business new for you, or had you been, uh, you know, I I don't believe that's been your core business before, but uh, um, how has that worked out uh, for customers to actually be able to uh, take the food home during the time that the restaurant was closed? A lot of people. It's, been like exploring options like uh, like some people normally don't cook they try to cook we're trying to make it easy for a lot of people and um, like to be honest our takeout so our takeout business compared to what we have before is it, really minimal it's, it's like really like just enough for us to survive yeah Exactly. So yeah. Like <laughs> at the end, at, at the end of the process, like yeah. I would usually, like I would add my garlic at the end, so okay. it, it doesn't like burn with the onion. The garlic doesn't take long to caramelize. Yeah. 
Yeah. So actually, you're just uh, chopping the garlic a little bit there. Yeah. Slicing them. Okay. And again, slower that you do it, like nice is gonna turn out. That is like the part that you really need patience. Okay. So if you're ready, we we'll move on to the next step. Yes. So in in here, like pretend this is the ideal situation. Your yes. your it's it's caramelized and good. So we have okay. a little white wine that you yep. gotta put in in to reduce yes. it. So any any anything on the stove top, especially with, with gas appliances, yes. you want to pull it away yes. and add your add your wine. Because it has the chance to light up. So you want to put it aside and go back on the element. So this step uh, let it reduce. So by reducing it, you're just concentrating concentrating the flavor from it. You're re you're yeah. creating the water. Right. So that's like deglazing um, the onions a little bit from the pan when you're adding the wine as that's well, right. correct? That's right. There's a lot of caramelization going on the bottom of the pan also. Right. So you don't want to lose those flavor. Like once you put the white wine in, yes. all, all the caramelization would come back to the liquid. Okay. It smells very you nice in here, reduce, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to reduce the point, like past half of the original volume. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you add in the uh, whipping cream. So we're just um preparing this as if so once it's reduced half reduced yeah. down by half we're adding the yep. whipping cream yep okay let me just add my whipping cream in and and chef so, for this specific recipe is there a specific type of uh wine or white wine that you would suggest or um no you could use you could use any kind of white wine uh I prefer on the drier side, so like you don't end up with a lot of like extra sweetness or it's already from the onion. Okay. So after you put the cream in, you want to pay a little attention. It might boil over. So yeah. it's almost come to a boil, you want to turn it down and let it simmer for a bit. Okay. So when it's simmering, I'm going to prepare like the egg yolk that mm -hmm. we need the egg yolk to thicken it. And how many egg yolks are you using there, Chef? Three. Three? Okay. So I've prepared my egg yolk. And this is boiling nicely, actually, on the cooktop yeah. here. And sorry, Chef, did you say so um, with the cream that's in here, it, this is also reducing by half? Yep. Yep, okay. So you can save your egg white for uh, some other use, like in, right. like. Chef, as the uh, as the cream is reducing there, maybe uh, share with us a little bit about your history in cooking. How actually did you get into uh, the culinary world? Well, me, uh, I grew up with a family special on my my mother's side every like all my uncle and including my mom like my grandfather it's like they're very good cook and i grew up with like good food like back then like i we really don't pay attention to like what is what does it take to make good food but then 
like more I, more I get into it, like as I grow up and like you realize there's a lot of time, you, time and effort you put it into a dish to make it uh, look nice and taste good. And like that's that's like maybe that's in my blood. And uh, I, I used to do a, a lot of like uh, job that I have is not really related to cooking. And, and I have a, a chance that I went to a culinary school and I got training from both uh, cooking and pastry. And like, and that's how I start my professional cooking career. Okay. Yeah, so like the liquid's about like you, you can see it a little bit thickened up already. Yes, I do actually. So, so uh, I think at, at this point it's almost ready for the next step. The next step okay. is like to blend everything together. Okay. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. Yes. I'm actually gonna put the blender up here so everybody can see it. Okay. And I have my blender set up here too. You see it okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll move up a little bit so you can see the top part. So, let's do it on this side. So, we have our onion liquid mix. Yes. I'm going to put it all in the blender. I'm going to put a little seasoning in there, a little salt, a okay. little pepper. And then we're going to put the lid on. We'll start with low. Now we'll turn it up. So when it when it, you have a smooth liquid and you see, you can still see like the steam is coming in, it's still really hot liquid. At this point, okay. like I want to add the egg yolk. The liquid is hot enough. They cook the egg yolk to thicken it, but right. not to a point that it will scramble. So that's how we want to achieve. Because of the butter in there, the egg yolk, when it's cooled down, it's going to thicken up. Right. Okay. I'm actually just doing mine a little bit on and off here so I can hear you. Okay. So, like, when it's blend, it's not, it's not really thick. But when, right. it's, when it cools down, it should, it should thicken up. But at this point, like you want, like you want to taste it, make sure it's seasoned well, because it's really hard to season out here. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you should taste butter, white wine, and the reduced cream. Like it's a good combination. So again. We'll put it in a bowl. Okay. And then the best thing to do is to put it on an ice bath. I'm gonna put away my blender. Okay. So we'll let it cool down and we'll get 
like restore it once in a while. Like just make yep. sure, make sure it 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 cools down as quick as possible. So we'll set it aside. Okay. Okay, next we're gonna we're gonna prepare the pickling. So okay. bread and butter pickle, uh, very versatile. You could you could do like a lot of like different uh, vegetable or or um, or other sometimes. Uh, Spices. So we have a pot here, and the first thing we want to do apple cider vinegar. Right. Are you ready to open on the other side? Yes. So, what I did, Chef, is because um, I know with the cooling process, I right combined everything earlier and it's at the cooling point right now yeah so and i know that you had mentioned about grilling or sauteing the um the radishes yeah correct so we're going to be watching you going through that process right now okay i'll do the liquid first and then i'll do that part okay so i have uh, apple cider vinegar and we have some sugar, just like normal granulated sugar. Right. It looks like a lot, but then like this is more liquid than we need. So uh, you can always use it for other purpose. Right. And in here, uh, to get to get it, uh, the flavor that we want, we have some we have some mustard seed to make ground cloves. And celery salt is to give it a flavor. So we add it okay. in when it's when it, when it's cold, especially because of turmeric. When it when you add it into hot liquid, it might it might lump up. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you you just want to dissolve the sugar. Once come once it's once it's heat up, you could you could actually turn off the heat and just let it steep in there because the the spices is, is it still need time to get the flavor out right so i'll let it simmer on the other side and i'll do the radishes on the other yep. on the other pan all right. So the radishes, if if you're doing on a barbecue, that that is great. You get a little more tall flavor from it. But you don't feel like you want to turn on the barbecue because of this. You could definitely right. do it in a hot pan. So you want to have a, a, a pan that you could like uh, with high heat on. Uh, try not to use like Teflon or non-stick pans. They're not built for high heat. Like what I used in the kitchen is uh carbon steel like this is like one of one of the best pan that you could use right right so we get the pan really hot and chef we just want to let you know that one of our viewers out there uh carol who lives in vancouver yep. she's uh she said she's very excited to come down and try the restaurant. Great, that's awesome. She's, watch, that's she's awesome. watching with us uh, live right now. Yeah, you can just come tonight, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. like, like uh, we, because of the very limited seat right now, like I said, uh, the most, of the, mo most of the time we're doing a 20 seat restaurant. So uh, we open up our reservations and like it, it's, almost guaranteed like it's guaranteed that you if you book for the reservation so we know what to expect it's like the best case scenario for everybody so you can see the pan is like getting a little smoked 
Like we just want a little bit of oil, but not too much. Chef, uh, we have um, we have a viewer who's watching live as well, Brooke, uh, out there right now, and uh, they're so excited about the dish. They're actually searching to see where they can get uh, bison right now. So the bison is not a very common protein that you could get from grocery store. If you get bison, you probably have to go to your uh, your neighborhood butcher shop. Like they they will have like more selection of different types of meat, uh, especially bison. Yeah, I would recommend go to your butcher shop. So your pan is really hot with a little bit of oil that like you want to add the radish. Like it should, like it should start to smoke, like right away. Like you add a little bit of salt, pepper, not too much, because the pickle liquid has a lot of flavor in it. Right. Like you want to get some char on it. Like I said, if you do it on the barbecue, like yeah. that would that would be. Uh, a little bit easier cleanup, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the, because this is known as the bread and butter radish pickle. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. with the uh, pickling process, how long normally does it take for you to put this to pickle? I usually keep it in there overnight. You get like it was. Go, the flavor would actually go into the product. Right. Yeah. But you, you could you you could use it right away because it's, it's it's kind of like a strong pickling, but but overnight is the best. And okay. it, it keeps in the it, it keeps in the fridge for like weeks, no problem. Because this uh, pickling liquid is like it's very it's very acidic, so it's quite safe in the fridge. So you see like the the radish is taking up some char like that's what that's what you want or you could even want more if you could have more char flavor if you want but i'm gonna like stop right there okay and i'll bring back my pickling liquid so the pickling liquid it, it came to a boil, and if you're doing it at home, you could yeah. you could have the radishes inside yeah. a mixing bowl. Oh, okay. Inside a mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. And then pour the hot liquid into it. Or if you would like to do it in a jar, that's that's, that's fine also. Okay. So you keep it in there overnight to get the best. Oh, so you don't have to pour all of the pickling liquid onto the radish then? You don't you don't have to. Like like I said, like this this amount of liquid according to the recipe, like you yeah. could pickle other stuff at the same time. Yeah. Or okay. you could you could do a, like a bigger amount of radishes if you like. Right. So we're gonna set that okay. aside. So right now, the last thing we're gonna do is the chimichurri. All right. I'm ready when you are for that. All right, so I'm gonna bring back the blender. Yes. Okay. You can see well over there, but can you yes. see the blender? Yes, I do. So in the chimichurri, I'm gonna start another jar. Yep. I have uh, some parsley that I like roughly chop up. Okay. So like that contribute a lot of flavor into it. Like the parsley that like, you could just go right in, like with stems and leaves and everything. Like this one I, I already chopped up. Okay. Yeah. And 
it's not limited to parsley. You could you could use like watercress. Like we use watercress for chimichurri all the time, and and especially in like summertime, we have a lot of wild greens. Right. Like we use that to to do the chimichurri. So okay. it's, it's 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 not really a a fixed recipe. So I have the parsley. I have uh the spices in like in our recipe. We have like cumin, coriander, cinnamon, chili flakes, and ground ginger. Right. So I'm gonna put all this in there. Okay. I kept mine separate, but that's fine because I did. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I, I actually measured it, it out. Okay. And then we do salt, pepper. I'm gonna do a few cloves of garlic. So the, the garlic, I was just gonna just take the really top off. Yes. And is it, I mean, I just sliced my garlic, so, cause it's all gonna oh, be blended. Matter. Yeah, the, it will blend better if, if you slice it. Okay. Top it up. Yep. And then I have some lemon juice. I have a, yes. a one, Lemon of this zest. Okay. I'm gonna put it all in there. All right. And the last ingredient I have is some grapeseed oil. Like I want to hold on to the grapeseed oil. I don't want to put everything in yet. Right. We'll get a better mix. Okay. And chef, are you? Did you mention? Because I might have missed it. Um, adding chili flakes to this? Yes, there are chili flakes in there. Okay, like, I didn't miss that then. Uh, oh, that was in your blended ingredients, I think, your spices. Yeah. Okay. And Chef, while I was asking you about the chili flakes, did you add any oil into the blender? Yeah, I add a little bit to start with because we have the okay. lemon juice. We have the lemon juice, like we, we should able to get it started. Okay. So uh, help it with the hunger. I think I need the extra oil. So if you, I think you I can do. see in the camera, if the the texture it's it's sort of like a thick sauce. So okay. it won't run off the spoon. Like that's what you want. But it's relatively a smooth mixture. So chef, if there's a little bit of resistance to when I'm doing this, I should be adding my oil. Yeah, you could add you could add a little bit of oil. If you have a puncture that would act it would really really help. So I'm gonna put it aside so we could get ready for the next step. Okay, sorry everyone, it was quite loud. <laughs> so this is the finished product.
So the very last things that we have to do is our main ingredient is the bison. We are ready to cook the bison. Okay, I'm just pouring my sauce into a bowl here. Okay. It turned out very nice. I think so. Um, you'll have to see at the end. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You ready? Yes, I am ready. I have everything here. So my bison, I, I was looking at yours when you we first started, and yeah. yours is much leaner than the cut that I have. So I'm just looking at that. Yeah. So did you uh, remove some of the fat from the bison? Well, from this particular cut, it's, it's very similar to flank. So we okay. remove a lot of like silver skin and like it's, it's as lean as it is. Like we didn't remove like much of the fat. There's a little bit remaining, but not so much. Okay. Like you I can still just... see a little bit of uh, marbling, but compared to beef, it's a lot leaner. Okay. And with um, the bison steak, is it, uh, does it matter what cut you're getting? No, it doesn't. Like you could, you could use any kind of cut that you want or if, or even this could be uh, a beef. So uh, it's because basically like uh, any red meat would do. You just have to cook it right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when we, before we sear the bison, I wanted to show you what I do with the king oyster mushroom. So these okay. guys are a king oyster mushroom. Uh, it usually it, it's quite it's quite big. Yes. And uh, I usually would just like cut a little stem off, like yep. they're like quite tough. And I was like cut it. I'll cut it in half, so nice and flat. And I like to score it. It has a way better, way better. Uh, presentation so it's easier and the saver to put uh, a tablecloth yes yeah. underneath and then you just sort of want to go do it a little pattern on it you want to go in a little bit but not all much but not the whole way Right. So this is the definite product. If if I open it up a little bit, you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. So we have better presentation. Is also like pick up a little bit uh, better flavor. Okay. All right. I scored it. I just needed to remove the bottom. All right. So my mushroom is ready. So we have our mushrooms, our potatoes, the fiddlehead, that's all ready, and then the bison. Do I, we're gonna do that next, so I can see. And yeah. are you, do we season it at all with, with any salt and pepper? Of course, yeah. yeah. Like I'm just starting to heat up my pan. Because okay. you don't want, like, you really want to create that uh, crust on your stick. I really okay. enjoy that part of the stick. Yeah. yeah. So you don't you, you don't want you don't want the, the the stick once it go on. If it's not hot enough, you start to boil, and all the right. juices start to come out from the stick. You won't get a nice searing, and yes, your stick can mm -hmm. end up to be uh, on the drier side. Okay. Yeah. So here here's my stick. Like you, you, okay. You see it, and like I season it. Quite well with salt pepper. Mm -hmm. Again, when you when you're trying to uh, cook a nice meal or even everyday cooking, 
try to try not to use islandized salt. Like use uh, some nice salt, like even at, at least kosher salt. Uh, you right. get a little bit, a little better flavor and like pepper also. Like if you grind it yourself, you get the most out of it. So I have my steak ready to go. My pan is sitting up nicely. And for okay. searing bison, like I, I really, most of the time we use uh, marrow fat or or duck fat. Like that's the two kind of like uh, me, media that we, we always use in the, in the kitchen. The reason why is like, it, it give it a little, like it's more heat resistant and of course, we're talking about flavor. You yeah. can really compare to like any like animal fat compared to any kind of other oil. So I'll have the I have a little bit of like uh, the marrow marrow fat in it. Yep. So nice and hot. We get put our stick down. So when this is really hot, you don't want to just to drop it in. Then you know end up splashing yourself. You put it down where like near near yourself yes. and then drop it the other way. So if it's flesh, it's going on the other side, not not yourself. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. So I'm hearing this nice uh, searing right now. My, that yep. tells me that my pan was nice and hot. That's right. And when it's searing, I, I'll, I'll get my uh, resting pan ready. I usually just use a cooling cooling rack. Okay. If you, you don't if you don't have one, you can yeah. easily just like you can easily just put like two forks against like each other and just wrap it on there. Okay, let me see what I can uh, come up with right now. <laughs> So as you can see, like if you like peek the uh, like underneath, you create this nicely caramelized crust. That's like gives a lot of flavor to the steak. So I know it's almost ready yep. to be flipped. Okay. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to cook a bison too much because okay. like one, it will it will like it will be like a little bit on the tougher side. And some of okay. the flavor would actually like disappear. So once I right. flip, like I turn the heat down a little bit, and yes. the next step we're gonna do we're just gonna, we're just gonna do a process called basting. It's a very common technique to like, cooking in a commercial kitchen. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna have like a little spring of thyme. Mm. Okay. Like a drop of butter. Yes, I have so the butter. I put out, like, I turn down the heat, I pull away from it. I don't want the butter to burn, but I do want to melt it. And as we, we're gonna do, like use the spoon, just to continue putting the butter and the marrow fat mixture onto it. So the time will actually give some flavor to the stick. Right. Yeah. At the same time, this milk solid in the butter right. would, would start to get a little caramelized and it also contributes to the flavor. Okay. And how long, um, I see that you've removed it from the heat. Are, are you going to be putting it back onto the heat? Or I, I am, I'm turning, I turn down the heat a lot because I don't want the butter to be burnt. Burn. Okay. I do want like the brown butter. 
Okay. Yeah. So. And I think, Chef, there you can see uh, you've created really a nice foam uh, in basting the butter. Right. The foam is created by the milk solid in the butter. Yes, which I actually see on mine as well. Now, it depends <laughs> on the cut of your meat and the thickness of your meat. You want you you want to cook to a medium. I mean, a, a rare than you stock. So right, it, like it's still really soft. Like you don't you don't want any a, a lot of resistance on it. You just want right. it to be like soft, and it will just keep on cooking itself when you rest it. So right. Okay. I'm gonna put okay. it. I'm gonna put it on the cooling rack just to let it rest. And okay. Like. Don't waste the little brown butter. Okay. Let's put it on. Yeah. So I actually have created a little cooling rack myself. So that's great. I have a kitchen here. So at this point, if you do it right, you see little brown speck on the bottom of the pan, but not burnt. So okay. these, the brown butter is yeah. very flavorful. So you want to maintain this. Okay. Now add just a little bit more fat into here. You use the same pan. The next one, the next step, we're gonna cook the potato and the mushroom. The potato, after it is cooked, it it, yep. or it it should be soft. And you put it on, and you put it on, uh, service, you should be able yeah. to squish it. You should be able oh, to okay. really easy to squish it. And by opening up, by opening up this potato and these edges, yeah. Yeah. It, it would, it would be nice and crispy in the pan. Okay. Yeah. So you want to do that? So just mash it down a little bit and then add them to the pan. Yep. Because my potatoes are smaller than yours, I will put extra potatoes in. Okay. And you want to season your potato. Yeah. Should I still keep this on a low heat, Chef, or am I increasing I'm, the heat right I'm, now? I'm on like a medium high because you, okay. you want the potato to crisp up and with the with the fat. Okay. So for our viewers out there, we're really uh, appreciative for you to stay on watching us. As you can see, this is actually real cooking in real time as uh, Chef Choi and Marilyn are actually cooking the entire dish from scratch. Okay, and I have one extra one. Perfect. Even if you're cooking at home, like if you have, you don't have time to do this every day, but yeah. even occasionally, like this is worth the work that you put in. And like we're, like in every in anybody working in the commercial kitchen would understand how much time they have to spend on a dish that someone might only finish finish it only like in five minutes. But, right. Uh, is definitely worth it if you put in the effort and and you you taste the difference. Right. Well and I think Chef as well as over these last months, you know, it's been it's been very a unique situation for everybody. And I think as families at home, people are cooking more and more together. So I think what you've shown is also just the enjoyment of the process of cooking. Exactly. So by this time, you should get little brown from the bottom. Yep. 
Yes, I do. So, so I'll flip them it. over. Yep. Like be a little gentle. You don't want to break it apart. Right. Oh, they're really nicely caramelized as well on the bottom. That's right. I can okay. see yours actually. I just only can you? see you cooking. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, I am, I'm just following exactly what you're saying, but it's looking great. It's smelling really nice in here. So, um, okay. okay. So potatoes are, have been flipped. Yeah. So when it's done. Yep. I'm going to turn off the heat. I put it aside. Okay. Like the last thing we have to deal with is the mushroom and, and the potato head. We can use okay. the same pan. Yeah. Like you haven't burned it yet if you do it right. At nope, point, I haven't burnt it. Great, like uh, mushrooms already cut up. You want to put it down, like like the score yeah. side down. You want to like have it like flat. Okay. Down there. Yeah. And then, and then you turn the back. Turn the beat back a little bit. Yeah. If you if you need a little bit more fat, by all means, add a little bit. Yeah. You do need that for the mushroom. Okay. Like you should see some sizzling going on on the side of the of the of the mushroom. Right. Yeah. The the mushroom tends to pick up a lot of uh, liquid or even fat, whatever that you put in, it absorbs right. all the flavor. Yeah, that's why like when you score it, you'll pick up more. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. So and my, how long I'm, do we need I'm, to have the mushrooms cooked? Like, how long? Yeah, how long is that going to be? Roughly about like five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I don't want to see. burn it also. Like once in a while, you could check the bottom. Like you should get a nice color. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Just make sure you have enough uh, oil in it to make sure it, it's cooked properly. Otherwise, like with with the with the stuff on like on the pan, uh, you might end up burning. All right. All right. So I let that sit for a little bit. Side, yeah, this side is done. I'm gonna flip this, but you can see it's it's like the where you scored it. It's nicely like presented right now. You get a little bit of crust, and then like you you pick up a little uh, of the liquid, then you're gonna put in. So I'm gonna cook this side for a little bit. At this okay. point, you want to season your mushroom. And the very last thing yeah. is our spider head. So I've turned over the mushrooms right now, and they're nicely uh, colored on the side. Yeah, and like keep the keep the heat not too high. You don't want to burn the fat. Burn, burn right. The fat. Okay. So it's about a minute or so. So I add our Peter Hess on the side. Okay. Season it a little bit. If I'm noticing that I don't have enough oil in the pan, should I add more before adding the fiddlehead? Yep. You yep. Do that. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. Once you put the fiddlehead down, because there's some moisture, it will start uh, deglazing the pan. But we're going to deglaze it a little bit further. Because okay. the fiddlehead is already cooked, like you don't need much time. And right. all you need, like I'm going to have, I'm going to add some white wine to it. 
Okay. And just a knob of butter. And a knob of butter. Yeah. And at this point, we turn off the heat. And I just need the butter. So I'll just grab my butter. Yeah. yeah. So the butter should nicely uh, coat the filler head. Okay. And and you can see you can see the mushroom has picked up uh, some flavor from the liquid, and yeah. it's a little bit softer, and it's like a lot more moist than before. When you touch it, it's it, it's like a little spongy, so it's done. So, chef, just a quick question to ask you before I add the oil. Um, yep. Should I be flipping the fiddlehead over? Yeah, the fiddlehead. The fiddlehead. You just want like sort of like saute in the rest of the pan. Yeah, like I was just okay. like mixing it. And again, since I'm adding the oil on, I'm moving my pan a bit away from off the burner. Yeah. Yeah. So Marilyn, then, that's actually wine that you're adding in, not oil. Oh, what did I say? The oil. Oh, I meant to say wine. Yes. Thank you. So end of process, your pan should be like relatively clean, but not burnt. Then and you know yes. you did the right thing. All right. So I don't want to say anything have... right now because it looks relatively clean. <laughs> so I think <laughs> I'm just melting the butter right now. In here, I'm almost done. Okay. All right. So you've removed it from the pan, uh, from the burner, I see. Yep. So I'm gonna I do have that. everything ready on trays. Okay, don't start plating without me yet, Jeff. I'm just almost there. No, don't worry, I'm waiting for you. Take okay. your time. Okay. And we're gonna be slicing the beef, so I just wanna clear my cutting board. Okay, so I am I'm ready. I have my chimichurri with me. I have everything yeah. on the side. And the one thing I so, do need to do is just actually um, is your pickles. I noticed that on your pickles, you've already, you drained some of them yeah. out. Is that what you did? Yeah, so I, I do have some have been sitting overnight. You see okay. like the, the color it get yes. into the radish as well. Yes, so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So you have ready. the chimichurri ready here. Our bread and butter pickle radish. Our bison ready to be cut. The king, uh, king oyster mushroom, the potato and pickle heads. And all right, I'm just onion. repositioning myself here. <laughs> okay, uh, while, while you're doing that, 
I'm yep. gonna say like the the onion, the yonte, when it's cooled down, uh, yes. it, it should be thick enough that if you want to put in a piping bag for presentation purpose, that you it's easier to do, or you could just just put it on. Like it, it's it's really uh, not really a big difference. Okay. So I have all these things ready here. Okay, one second. I did put it into a bag so that I can squeeze it out. Yeah. It's nice and cool. And you and it's I'm not sure if mine is as thick as yours, Chef, so we will just work with it. Probably this for just now. need more cooling. It's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I am ready. All right. So we're going to cut the bison right now. Yes. So for for whatever cut that you're going to do, yes. like you, you're going to see like the, the grain, like from my cut, the grain is going this way. So I want to cut it this way against the grain. Like you, so it will okay. end up with a ten, like more tender product. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think you'll be able to see it from this angle. And how thick are we? Are you slicing the steak? Oh, I see. Okay. No, I think about like uh, a quarter inch. Yep. Is the preference whatever thickness you think you like, but you don't okay. want it to be too thin you still want some texture so you notice a lot of juice would come out but yeah inside inside you still like want to see like a, a medium wear done so like, yes lots of still lots of juice yes okay want. i i think that's nice And how many slices am I actually slicing here, Chef? Well, the whole thing that you have. I don't know how okay. big you'll cut it, but... It's pretty big. Yeah, if you want to eat more, just cut more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's no rules here. Okay. That cooks really nicely on the pan, actually, so. Okay. All right. Done my slicing, yes. So, when you're ready, we can start plating. Okay. I am ready. All right. So, the first thing that we put down is the chimichurri as, as, the, as the base. All right. So, so I need you can my do spoon. any kind, any kind of plating design that that you want. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what we did, like in the restaurant. Sort I'm of gonna one. watch you first for a second. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do like just a random circle. The next thing I'm gonna put is some potato. And I like to have little definition of the layer uh, that on, on the presentation side. I want to put a mushroom right here. And then I'll start like doing some bison. Like you could, you could use like the smaller end piece like towards the bottom and then the nicer one on top so you have a better presentation. So, uh, okay, uh, so we did the potatoes underneath that first. Yep. And then the mushrooms or the bison first. You could you could do you could I have one piece of mushroom like sitting okay. like sort of like on the side if you want to yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then okay. I, I have I want to create some different layers that you can yep. see. Yeah. At the same time so I'll do like some fiddleheads. So you put the bison then after the mushroom went on, then it's the bison in layer. Yeah, I, I still have one piece of mushroom that I have not put on. Okay. Because I, right. I, I want people to see a little bit more different different um, 
component on the dish. Yep. Okay. I guess so, you could just be very creative with this and do how well, sure. you want it. Yeah, like right? this is like creative the way that we want it. Yeah. And I'll, I have all the bison in. I have the bitter heads in. Yep. The very last thing I'm going to do is just some radishes. I give it a lot of nice color. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I like little sweetness and, uh, and acidity. I, I, I usually would just use maybe a little bit of drizzle of the pickle and liquid. It adds a lot of flavor into the dish. And the onion liaison, I yep. would type it on. Like you could just go in between anywhere that you like, because it would add, it, it would it would just be part of the sauce that you would you would eat with the bison. Okay. Yeah, I think I didn't. It didn't cool completely, so let's just see. that's okay. You could if if it if it's a little bit runny. You, yeah. you could actually spoon it in. It is not, it's not really like a a uh, requirement that you have a you have a thick. Uh, okay, let's just see this for a second. Yeah, we'll wait for you. Okay, yours is prettier with the uh, <laughs> with your sauce because yours well, is thicker. I, I, Done it uh, many many times, so I'm sure I'm sure you've done it multiple times. <laughs> I'm you're, gonna leave it as that right like now. Better products than me, like with me. So like, right. we have a little uh, kale box and little spring flower going on in here. So we add a little touch uh, because we're like it's springtime. So just right. Okay. On your, yeah. So uh, whatever you you feel you're creative, like by all means, like impress your diner. Right. I think I'm going to add, because I do not have the flowers, so I think that the radishes look really nice, the color. Yeah. I'm just going to put that on there. Okay. I, I did my best, so, Chef, uh, to follow through on this. I'm, I'm pleased with this, so I'd like you to see this as well. So yeah. I'm not sure if you would. Um, can you see that? Yeah, that's nice. Yes. Okay. That's nice. The real yeah. results will be when everybody tastes this and tells me um, that's right. if it's so good. I'll so get a, like, a little yeah. closer for the camera. So this is the finished product that we make today. Well, chef, uh, chef and Marilyn, both uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this. It was great uh, to have you here. Um, chef, once again, let's uh, talk a little bit about the restaurant and where uh, your customers right now in Vancouver can experience this dish right now. Um, so Forge uh, in Vancouver on Robson Street. Um, Again, uh, you are open which days uh, and what hours right now? So we're open Wednesday to Sunday right now, starting uh, from 5 p.m. But uh, we, we have a new program just start this week. We have happy hour 4 to 6. So there is a special, uh, special discount price of wine and beer and also half price for oysters. And during the happy hours, the small plate menu is available so take advantage of that come visit us great well uh again for those viewers that are in uh vancouver we really encourage you to take the time to go down to forage and uh experience uh what chef Choi has to offer support them right now uh for those viewers that are from watching across the country right now 
Um, be sure to, next time you're in Vancouver, uh, stop by and see uh, Chef Choi at Forge. Um, I'm sure it'll be uh, a great experience. Uh, so we'd like to get all the viewers there next time you're in Vancouver. Uh, Chef Choi, we wanna thank you for your time, uh, for really joining us today. Thank you um, very much for having me. This is lots of no, fun. No, it's, it's been uh, a great amount of fun. Um, now, I know that we are going to buy uh, 100 meals from you, uh, and right. together we're going to donate this. Do you want to talk a little bit about where we're actually going to donate the meals to? So, uh, as, as far as I know, like these uh, food would go to front eye workers and mm -hmm. like, maybe at like, different uh, hospitals or Correct. Different, uh, health, like senior home. And uh, or or I, I think like for people who doesn't have a chance to come to visit us yet, like come visit us and uh, have, have this like try it yourself and see if that's something uh, it sort of looks like a video that we we producing right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I think you're right, Chef. For those that uh, don't have the chance right now um to uh come down to try your food you know uh, hopefully try this bison dish at home um it looks delicious and it smells delicious it's right in front of us and uh we're really happy to donate with you those meals uh to the frontline workers in vancouver area right now um so it's been a lot of fun having you with us again uh thank you so much for your time i know uh, we've taken a lot of your time out of your busy day, but uh, hopefully you've had fun cooking with us uh, as well. Thanks very much again. And I uh, hope we could do, do this again. Uh, yeah. This is, this is great experience. Oh, uh, again, thank you so much for our viewers out there. Thank you for joining us uh, in this really live cooking session uh, here at Mila Live. Uh, hopefully you can join us next week as well with uh, hashtag Mila Dines Local. Um, we have some exciting restaurants joining us next week. We have a uh, Kopi restaurant here in Toronto who's going to join us on Tuesday, on Thursday next week. Uh, we're also going to have a restaurant here in Toronto called The Good Son, uh, who's going to be cooking along with us. Um, and just as a reminder as well, uh, our Mila Experience Centers are open across the country right now. Um, in this first phase, we're accepting by appointment only, uh, as well as um, curbside pickup. Unfortunately, for those of you that have visited one of our experience centers, either in Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, uh, Montreal, um, normally we run actually culinary classes. Unfortunately, we currently don't offer those in person, but uh, this week we actually have started offering these classes virtually. Uh, and Maryland's actually hosting those classes. We have an exciting class the next week, our discovery class where we're actually going to explore our combination steam convection oven. So if you want to learn more in detail about that specific product, be sure to join us. Be sure to join Marilyn uh, on Wednesday next week uh, for that class. So uh, again, we want to thank all of you on behalf of the team at Forage, Chef Choi, Marilyn, myself, and the Mila Canada team for joining us today. And very, very lastly, we want to send a very, very big uh, thank you again to all the frontline workers out there across the country, um, providing all the necessary services uh, to the communities across the country right now. Uh, again, we want to say thank you very much. Um, Chef Choi, thank you uh, once, once again for uh, joining us here today on Meal Alive. Um, and uh, we want to wish everybody a fantastic uh, afternoon across the country for all the viewers that are joining us right now. Thank you very much. Thank you.